who lives in our city. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you very much for recording. And, and so uh, when we think about uh, just who lives in Seattle, did you know that a few years ago, there was a person down in the Seattle Times who crunched the data and found out that adults in Seattle, only 30% of them, about three in 10, were actually born in Washington state uh, because Seattle has pulled in a lot of folks from all over the country and really all over the globe. And that means that if you're an adult that was born in Seattle and still living in Seattle, you're a part of like a really special, uh, pretty small club. And I'm a part of that club. I mean, if you want to, I would love to see some thumbs ups from you if you're uh, born and raised in the Seattle area. I think that'd be really interesting for me. Uh, but uh, we can also push forward a little bit because uh, students oftentimes tell me uh, that there are other things that they like learning about myself. And so uh, one thing I like to tell you is uh, I was a non-traditional student. Uh, actually, K through 12 was not the best time for me. Uh, I didn't uh, really come into my own during that time. But instead, uh, I uh, decided that after high school, I wanted to go uh, work for a little while. And so I worked at this place pictured here, uh, Dick's Drive-In. I was actually an employee there for about five years. And I learned a ton. It was my first experience getting tear gassed uh, back in 1999 at the WTO protest. I was actually managing the Broadway store at that time uh, when the tear gas was coming in through the windows. Let, let me know if you have questions about that. Uh, but some other things about me, uh, you know, after I worked at Dix for a number of years, uh, I moved forward and uh, came to North Seattle College, which really was the place that changed my life. Uh, there was so much that I didn't know I didn't know until I came to North Seattle. And uh, North Seattle also prepared me really well uh, for uh, further studies at the University of Washington, uh, where I got both my bachelor's degree and my master's degree in sociology. And, uh, you know, and students also like to know uh, that I'm a sports fan. Uh, I'm a hockey fan. I mean, I don't know if you've been following the news about our uh, incoming hockey team, the Seattle Kraken. Uh, I am a Canucks fan by history, and so that creates a little bit of tension for me. I mean, uh, who should I be loyal to? The team that I've been following for 15 years or the team that is now uh, in my hometown? That's going to be a little bit of a conundrum. And then finally, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that I love my dog, Pavel Bure, pictured for you here. I mean, look at how adorable he is. He's just really, he's a bundle of joy. I love him so much. And I also love hash browns because uh, they are one of the most efficient ways uh, to get butter into my mouth. And I love uh, foods that carry butter uh, from over there uh, to up here. And a uh, big thumbs up uh, to Savannah, born and raised in South Seattle. I dig that. I, I used to hang out in South Seattle quite a bit back in my North Seattle college days as a student. Uh, but let's go ahead and move forward now because I think the, the major emphasis for today is probably about the stuff that we uh, might call sociology. And so what the heck is sociology? I mean, when I walk around the city, when I used to interact with people more often uh, before the pandemic, I talked to them all the time. And uh, what I learned is that many people don't know what sociology is. Uh, it's oftentimes confused uh, with the field of social work, which is related, but not exactly the same. And so uh, what is sociology? Uh, well, sociology is, let's see, oh yeah, there it is. Oh, oh. Getting ahead of myself. Uh, sociology is uh, the systematic study of the connections between each one of us as individuals and the social forces that surround us. And as uh, social forces are these just really large things that we have no control over, like where you're born or the language that people speak in the place where you were born, who your parents are, uh, who the politicians are at the time of your birth. All of these things have an impact on who we become as individuals, and so we should understand them. And at the same time, when we think about sociology, we should also remember uh, that individuals can influence the social forces around them as well. So uh, when I uh, try to remember this in a really succinct way or a really short way, I think about sociology as investigating the individual plus social forces. Uh, Sometimes we think about social forces as affecting the individual. Other times we think about the individual as influencing social forces. And uh, as the result of this orientation, uh, there's actually quite a few topics uh, that sociologists explore. In fact, uh, this isn't a complete list. Uh, the list I'm providing for you here is only the stuff that we talk about in Social 101. Uh, but there's really a lot of stuff that can be covered in sociology because uh, the vastness of human experience is just so much material for us to chew on. And it turns out that a lot of really famous people have chewed on that sociological stuff. And so uh, I'm going to uh, switch my screen share. But in just a moment, I'll be asking you uh, which of these 10 people uh, is actually not uh, a holder of a sociology degree. Uh, nine of these folks have sociology degrees, uh, but one of them does not. Uh, can you figure out who it is? And uh, the way that I'm going to do this here is I'm going to use a poll everywhere poll. 
So uh, what you should now be able to see is uh, the instructions about how to join the poll, and then also uh, the list of 10 folks, or I guess 11 folks, uh, from which you have to choose. Uh, can everybody see that poll? Can you give me like a thumbs up or a verbal yes? Can you see the poll? You can either respond using your device uh, by going to pollev.com slash Jeffrey Palm 573, or you could answer uh, from your cell phone uh, by texting uh, 37607 and uh, texting my name, Jeffrey Palm 573, and then uh, sending a second text uh, that includes the letter that corresponds with a person uh, that you think does not have the sociology degree. And your choices here are kind of interesting. Uh, we have uh, the Reverend, uh, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Uh, we have the Congresswoman from LA, Maxine Waters, very powerful. Uh, we have former US Senator Barbara Mikulski from Maryland. We have one vote for Ronald Reagan, good vote. Uh, we have uh, Woodrow Wilson, another former US president. I like that vote from Egypt. Palmer. And uh, we also have Michelle Obama. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Ruth Westheimer, aka Dr. Ruth, also known as the sex doctor. Uh, we have Alonzo Morton, uh, the famous basketball player uh, most associated with the Miami Heat. Uh, Joe Teesman, uh, Super Bowl winner from Super Bowl 17. And then uh, lastly, myself, Jeffrey P. And uh, I'll give you a few more moments to chime in here to uh, give me your perspective about who you think might not have a sociology degree. One of these people does not. The other 10 do. Now I'll uh, use this time to check the chat, see if anything else is going on over here. Yeah, looking pretty good. All right, we have a vote for uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, 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 good. Three people in and let's see how many people do we have here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, it looks like we have maybe seven voters total and uh, you know, it's okay. Not everybody wants to participate in surveys and polls. So maybe I'll give you, uh, what do you think? Another 20 seconds and then we'll move forward. I'll tell you who the correct answer is. All right, last chance to get your answers in. All right, let's go ahead and stop this poll here. Turns out that the correct answer is actually former president, well, I guess we always called him president, uh, Woodrow Wilson. Uh, Woodrow Wilson has the special distinction of being the last president to hold a PhD back in the early 20th century. Uh, but that PhD was in political science, not sociology. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. has a sociology degree. Uh, I Forget the college that uh, MLK went to. Uh, Ronald Reagan has a do uh, double degree in economics and sociology. And then I, I too have a sociology degree as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, let's see, I need to get rid of this one and uh, bring back my other, other screen here. Let's see, there we go. All right, yes, there it is. All right, and so it, it turns out there's a ton of people with sociology degrees, many folks that you might not expect. Uh, there's also many folks I didn't put on this list here for you. Uh, but if we're thinking about sociology degrees, uh, one of the reasons why uh, they might be so popular and common is because they're offered all over the place. It turns out uh, that every single college in the Seattle colleges offers a sociology program. Uh, I'm the faculty at North Seattle College. Uh, we also have great faculty at Central and South. You really can't go wrong uh, choosing a sociology faculty from the Seattle College's district. And uh, as far as entry requirements go, uh, the recommendation is to have uh, pre-college English and math, although uh, depending on which campus you end up at, uh, you might find out that it's not a requirement so much as an encouragement. So uh, best practice here, like usual, uh, make sure you talk to advising to understand uh, what those requirements are. Okay, and uh, many people say, well, you know, what do we actually learn in sociology? And so I just want to make sure I point out that whenever you take sociology courses at the college level, uh, you're taking them from somebody who holds an advanced degree. Uh, at community colleges, uh, the regular bar is that you have a master's degree. And so most folks that you take uh, classes from at the community college at North Seattle, for example, uh, have at least a master's, if not a PhD. And then if you uh, go to a place like the University of Washington, uh, those folks oftentimes have PhDs or are working on their PhDs, so they have a lot of information that they can share with you. Uh, 
Uh, but information like what? You know, what kind of stuff do you learn? And so uh, because sociology is so vast, because uh, there are so many different topics, uh, it's not uncommon uh, for people to zero in or choose a specific topical area uh, where they really emphasize uh, the literature. Uh, for me, my specific topical areas are deviance and crime. I, I teach a criminology class, for example. Uh, I also did a lot of research in immigration and race and ethnicity, which are, you know, hot topics today. And th there's a lot to learn. Uh, let me know if you have questions. I'll share with you what I know. Uh, but in addition to that topical content, uh, sociologists also learn methodology. Uh, we learn a lot about sampling techniques. Uh, we learn a lot about causal analysis, thinking about the world in terms of relationships between independent variables and dependent variables. Very important stuff. Uh, if you uh, major in sociology, uh, you will be learning a lot of skills that you can use uh, to push back against misinformation uh, because misinformation is oftentimes uh, built upon really bad data or sometimes no data at all. Uh, learning sociology will give you the tools and will also teach you uh, how to think critically about the information that you receive. Uh, that critical thinking is really important. I mean, you want to make sure that you're learning what's actually true, right? And so uh, sociology will help you build those skills. Uh, but I think also uh, one of the things that I uh, tried to practice in my own life, and uh, might be a lifelong lesson that sociology encourages, uh, are the lessons of humility and curiosity. It turns out that because humans are so funky, I mean, like we can't really predict human behavior all that well, right? And uh, so as we try to learn more and more about ourselves, it, it really breeds humility within you. Uh, you start to recognize that there is so much more out there to learn. And uh, that humility allows you to open yourself up to different explanations that you might not have already considered. And uh, so if you uh, combine that humility, that, uh, that feeling that there's more to know with curiosity, Oh, at the end of 10 years, you can know a lot of stuff. Uh, trust me about that one or uh, test me and ask me questions about that in just a little bit. Uh, but let's go ahead and move forward because I also want to give you a quick visual that helps to frame uh, the way that sociology can be related to your own experience. Uh, notice here, this is a Venn diagram that, that shows you how things uh, relate and overlap with each other. And so the overall uh, idea that we're talking about is your life. Uh, you know, everything that has happened to you and everything that you will do in your future. That's your life. And if you study sociology at the center of that uh, circle there, uh, what you'll find is that sociology will, in, it will inform uh, the way that you understand your family. It will inform the way that you understand how you relate to your parents and your siblings. Uh, many uh, parents tell me uh, that after they take sociology courses, it actually affects the way that they raise their kids uh, because they start thinking about the relationships between themselves and their family members in different ways uh, that they didn't learn how to do as they were growing up. And at the same time, the experiences that you have within the family can also influence the way that you study sociology. Uh, some of the best sociologists of the family that I know uh, got their start thinking about family process based on their own family. And so uh, when you're studying sociology, the information that you have, that you're an expert on, because it's from your own experience, that information can be used to inform how you proceed with your studies, right? Uh, you can learn more about things like careers. Uh, sociologists spend a lot of time studying occupations, uh, why people end up in the occupations that they choose. Why do we see uh, different proportions of people uh, categorized by gender in STEM fields? Why is that? Uh, why is it? that we see uh, that certain folks are way likely to get college degrees and other folks are not, right? Uh, those ways of thinking are very sociological. And again, uh, the experiences that you have can inform what you try to learn as you move through. Uh, this also can be used to inform the way that you think about civic life. Uh, should you vote? And sociologists say yes, right? And sociologists would also say that it's really important just to engage with your neighbors. Uh, what does it mean uh, to be a good member of your community? Uh, sociology will give you a lot of information that you can use uh, to come to your own conclusions about what it means to be a good member of your community. And so here, this visual again, is here to uh, illustrate to you uh, that your own experience is related to uh, the sociology that you could learn in college. And you can take that information that you learn and reapply it to your future experiences. Just pretty darn cool. Uh, but let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, I, I also want to mention here that if you uh, really enjoy sociology, like you, you taste it for the first time in the Seattle College District and you want more, uh, you can find sociology programs in almost every university across the country. Uh, I know personally uh, that my students have gone 
gone forward after their experience in North Seattle College uh, to places like the UW Seattle campus. I know students who go to Tacoma and Bothell. I have students who just graduated from Western that I talked to a few weeks ago. I know students that graduated from Washington State University, SPU, SU. I know students that just got out of the nursing program at Johns Hopkins. I know folks down at UCLA, uh, they have about a few quarters left. I, I know students that have gone to UW Madison over there in Wisconsin. I know folks that have headed over to Boston. I even know somebody who went to the Ross School of Medicine in the Caribbean, you know? In other words, uh, if you get your start in sociology at the Seattle colleges, there's no limit to where you can go. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity out there and uh, our colleges will prepare you to take advantage of that opportunity. I, I oftentimes like to remember what Oprah said, when opportunity comes knocking, be ready, right? Seattle colleges will help you get there. And uh, when you're thinking about what to do after uh, you have your sociology education, uh, there's really like a whole bunch of options. I mean, yeah, you could become a sociologist and uh, teach at maybe the community college or the university level, but you could also leave education to go into the private sector and become a market analyst. I, I know a handful of folks that have done some market analysis for companies like Pepsi and Boeing, you know, uh, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. You could also go into behavioral science. Uh, one of my buddies is down at UC Berkeley right now in their Center for Behavioral Science. It's a little bit more interdisciplinary. And as a result of the methodology training that people get, especially at the graduate level in sociology, uh, you're pretty well prepared to be a statistician and a data scientist. I mean, in my time at the UW as a graduate student, I minored in statistics. And it, I can't tell you how useful it is. It's totally changed my way of thinking. Uh, also, uh, one of my former mentors at the UW uh, was a probation officer before they became a criminologist, but it can also work in the other direction. I have students right now, or I guess former students, uh, that are working at the Seattle Public Defender's Office uh, because it turns out uh, that sociology changes the way you think about justice. Uh, it's not just about individuals anymore, but it's about what it means for us as a community. Uh, I also know students that have moved on to social services. Uh, they're working to correct problems uh, with our unhoused population, for example, and other folks end up in public relations too. And again, this is just a small, a short list. Uh, there are so many different careers uh, that people with sociology training end up in. I mean, we didn't even talk about social rights activists or, you know, the office of president, for example, right? And uh, when we're thinking about jobs, I'm not sure if this is true for the people in this small breakout room, but many people are concerned uh, with how much money you can make if you uh, choose a particular career. So uh, let's think a little bit about uh, how we might use sociology to inform the way uh, that we think about uh, the relationship between your college major and the money that you earn. So uh, one way of beginning this process might be by looking at information from the Workforce Development Council of King County. So uh, let's go there together. All right, and then uh, let's see. Oh, I, I have to change this because I want you to see what I'm seeing. All right, so uh, you should now be able to see uh, the website for the Workforce Development Council of Seattle King County. And uh, if you pop in here to the browsing career section, uh, you can type in sociology and see what happens. I'll say sociologist. And so uh, the uh, returns here are pretty fast. And uh, what do we see? Uh, we see that sociologists have a median salary of 61,500, right? And that median means that there are 50% of people who make more and 50% of people who make less. Uh, if we keep going down, uh, we see that uh, sociology teachers at the post-secondary level, which means college essentially, uh, have a median salary of about $79,000 per year. So 50% make more and 50% make less. Uh, and uh, if we're thinking about this, uh, one question I might ask is, what is the difference uh, between a sociologist and a sociology teacher? And if I'm looking around this web page, I'm not really seeing a whole bunch of information, right? In fact, I, I can't tell how this data was created or whether or not it's good. Uh, if we cruise down the page, uh, one thing we might see is that this career coach function is powered by a company called MC. Uh, MC, I've never heard of them. Uh, I know some people who work in the salary field uh, at a company called Payscale, for example, and they've never heard of them either. In fact, uh, when you uh, try to look up information on MC, it'll be really hard to find out how they create uh, the data that they're giving to you. And if we don't know how the data is created, how do we know if the data is any good? 
right? So uh, I might uh, uh, keep the ideas uh, from uh, this website in mind, but I wouldn't stop there. Uh, maybe let's look at another source, uh, maybe something like ZipRecruiter, right? Uh, ZipRecruiter is another website that gives you information about salaries. And uh, what you can see here is that ZipRecruiter claims that on the national level, uh, sociology majors on average earn about $58,000 per year. Uh, there's a lot of information here, and you can uh, look at this on your own time if you wish, but the, the thing I want to show you is that ZipRecruiter does a slightly better job of telling us how they create their data. Uh, they tell us that ZipRecruiter uh, salary estimates, histograms, trends, and comparisons are derived from both employer job postings right, and third-party data sources. And uh, let's think about this a little bit. Are every, is every job uh, that it becomes available uh, posted by the employer? Mm. Uh, sometimes jobs are uh, filled without posting the job online first. And so we know already right off the bat uh, that the information from ZipRecruiter might not be complete, might not be total. It might exclude uh, some folks and we don't know who they are means that the data might not be that great. Uh, we also really don't know who these third-party data sources are either. And essentially what I'm uh, demonstrating for you is how a sociologist might think about the data that they encounter in their personal experience. And uh, neither of these sources really meets my, uh, my standard for being transparent. I, I wouldn't trust them right off the bat. Uh, but there's also a third source I wanted to show you. And whenever I share this with students, they, they usually enjoy it uh, because uh, this information is like super specific and you can look it up yourself. Uh, did you know that government employee salaries are actually public information? And so you can look up uh, how much government employees make. Uh, you can find uh, this information on the fiscal.wa.gov slash salaries.aspx website. And uh, can you see if you want to be a really high paid government employee, uh, what kind of job do you want to have? What do you think? Feel free to unmute yourself. D1 sports. Yeah. I mean, those football coaches make some money, right? I mean, look at Mike Leach right there in 2019. That's two years ago. His salary is probably a little bit higher now, right? In 2019, he was almost pulling in $4 million. In fact, if you look at the top five uh, highest paying jobs in Washington state for government employees, you'll see they're all coaches. Right. And, and so uh, and sociology people, uh, sociology majors might not make as much money as football coaches do. Uh, but one thing I might do if I was in your shoes here is I would just look up some sociology faculty. Uh, so let's, let's look at the Department of Sociology at the University of Washington here. I'm going to look at the core faculty. They're the folks who are still teaching. And Zach Almquist is relatively new. I know his data is not in there. But Catherine Beckett has been around for a little while. And I, I really like to bring her up because Catherine Beckett, I'm not sure uh, if you follow the news on this, uh, but Catherine Beckett in 2016 uh, combined her energies with Heather Evans, this other person down here, uh, to write a, an amicus curiae brief for the Washington State Supreme Court. And it was that amicus Curie brief written by two sociology majors that led to the ruling uh, that the death penalty was unconstitutional in Washington state. It's pretty powerful stuff. Sociologists make a difference, right? And uh, if we're looking at uh, Catherine Beckett, for example, we can look up Catherine's salary pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, Catherine's not doing too poorly, right? In 2019, Catherine pulled in about $225,000 per year. And you can see uh, that her salary tends to go up year over year. So I bet you Catherine's doing even better now, right? And so uh, you could use uh, this type of information on your own uh, to figure out what the average salaries are for people at different institutions across the state. In other words, uh, sociology will empower you. It will teach you how uh, to move forward to evaluate the world in such a way uh, that you can learn what you want to learn about it, and you can be confident in the conclusions uh, at which you arrive. So uh, I know I've been giving you a lot of information, and uh, I haven't paused too much to take questions, uh, but I am really curious to know uh, what you're thinking about and uh, maybe what questions you have about sociology or anything else uh, that you might want a sociologist to weigh in on. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, let me know what you're thinking.